Blake's. Oh, like, hey, Scoob, did you hear Nikki Blake is hosting a Scooby-Doo panel? No. Yeah. Like on today's Scooby-Doo episode, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy meet Nikki Blake. Yeah, in a Scooby panel. <laughs> like, we need to get this puppy started. <laughs> okay, Nikki Blake, take it away, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Welcome to the Scooby panel. I'm your host, Nikki Blake from ScoobyAddicts.com, and today we're talking about the food of the 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Before we begin, I'll have everyone introduce themselves, and Wendy will start with you. Hi, I'm Wendy Bridge. I'm a commission artist. Today, Scrappy is my co-pilot. I did this just for that look on Nikki's face, which is like the best thing ever. It's 13 ghosts, guys. We can't not include Scrappy, okay? So... Scrappy and I are excited for this. Obviously, we both love Scooby-Doo very much. Joel? Hey there, I am Joel from the YouTube channel Planet Scooby. Awesome. So we're going to talk about the food of the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, which is boring. There was nothing exciting. We can't even do a taste test because there was nothing to taste unless we wanted just normal food. Or what looked like mush. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The foods in the episode were really weird in this series because a lot of the time it didn't look like food. Mm -hmm. It looked like colored stuff in a bowl or yeah. just mush. And it was kind of gross in a way. You know, the other series, we got a lot better drawings of food. And then in this series, it was just like some lines and color and you figure out what it is when you look at it. <laughs> Wendy, what were your thoughts on the foods in the episode? Yeah, there. it was such a weird two-sided thing where, yes, there was all of this, like, ambiguous liquid and goo of some sort and, and like, mud. And then at the same time, a bunch of normal stuff. Here's a bunch of fruit. There was a lot. Of, I noticed there was a lot of fruit in this. At least I found that there was like a lot of that. And just like normal stuff, you know, they're watching a movie. We'll make popcorn like normal as can be. Let's we're going out for dinner. Here's a big steak. You know, here's some ribs. I was actually quite impressed with that plate that Vincent Van Gogh eats at one point where it is like a rack of ribs and some potatoes and some peas and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, that's very creative. Good for you. I like that. And then there were like some giant steaks, although they looked grossly undercooked because they were red. So I would have sent them back to the kitchen. Absolutely. Um, but they did look to be like maybe like 20 ounce steaks. And I absolutely could have eaten one of those. So, so yeah, it was, it was kind of an interesting, an interesting take on it. Um, I kind of wonder if maybe that's in part due to the fact that at least when I think of this episode or not this episode of this series, it feels like maybe it's meant to be just like a little bit more grown up and serious than previous Scooby ones. Like maybe the target demographic was like a couple of years older than the kids that they were targeting for like Scooby-Doo, where are you? Which would make sense because they've got real ghosts and, and demons and things like they're dealing with more serious stuff. So maybe there was a thought that, you know, when you get a little bit older, you're less interested in like weird food and, and crazy stuff. Maybe that was all that I could really think of that that might have driven that. I mean, or the obvious thing, too, is that someone came up with the concept of the show and it was their baby and maybe this was just what they liked i'm not into crazy food so the show that i make is not gonna have any of it and that that's i think that's probably more of like why it's like that but there were a couple of things like i say that i thought were well well drawn but then it's like yeah what what is this like like momsy do has this big bowl of like <laughs> slime and and we're gonna eat it like no even my, like, my dogs wouldn't have eaten that, you know? I, I just, it, it was, it was weird. It was kind of weird. So, yeah, like, so not, 
Like, I guess they, I guess that does make them kind of gross or weird, but if you don't know what it is, you can't try it. So they kind of left it very up in the air. Like, I don't know, but yeah, I, I thought that was kind of, kind of interesting how many things are like, just like, here's a blob, use your imagination, I guess. Um, I think that they could have maybe, I don't know. I was very interested in the first episode where they have like the drinks of Wolfbane. I kind of feel like there was a missed opportunity to like, I don't, I don't know what they would have done or what they would have shown, but I just feel like I wanted to see it and that it should have looked, it should have been like glowing or something, you know, like lime green and it's glowing in the, in the, the glass. I kind of feel like they should have maybe just a few things like that, that ended up being pretty important because it turns Daphne into a werewolf. So it, it's an important drink that she's drinking and I wish that they'd have made it something like a little bit more fun because like to be honest without the same level of weird crazy foods like it was it was like a little bit boring it really did kind of when I thought about it in terms of the food I was like yeah this is making it like a little bit boring they're not doing anything fun like even in in previous series if you have a regular food like pizza you get Scooby and Shaggy doing cool things like in Menace in Venice and like they throw the pizzas up and the fan cuts them, you know, and I know, I know that you had a hard time with that, but you know, that at least they took like a regular food, but they did something interesting that really added to the episode and gave Nikki nightmares about <laughs> what kind of dust and bugs and gross stuff is now on the pizza that everybody ate. That's right. <laughs> It was pretty um, gross yeah. when they did that. Could you imagine when, slicing a pizza with a ceiling it, yeah. fan? Yeah. When I think of my ceiling fans, yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, see, it was not, there's not really a lot in this episode, unfortunately. Yeah. I had a hard time differentiating between tomatoes and red apples mm. when they showed, because mm -hmm. it just looked like a red ball. So I yeah. wasn't sure what it was. Joel, what were your thoughts on the food in 13 Ghosts? I took notes. Awesome. Not very long. <laughs> First episode, I thought, kind of started off strong because you had Judge Burgermeister. And then you have the burger jokes. Mm -hmm. I thought it was awesome. Burgermeister presiding. Burgermeister? Mm, yummy. Uh, like when he said, though, the Wolfbane thing was a lot down. Cruise ship episode. When I think of cruise ships, I think of all-you-can-eat buffets. I didn't see any of that here. A lot of missed opportunity. Like, everyone I know, just all they want to do is just go on a cruise ship and eat, 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 eat. I know Scooby has PTSD, but... Ooh, should have saved Scooby from that. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, the popcorn scene. Okay, I kind of remembered that. I like the scene where... Scrappy found the, the dip for the Scooby Snacks. And he's like, mm -hmm. this dip has dirt in it. And then he goes, pew. <laughs> There's dirt in this dip. Toy. That's probably my favorite food scene. Uh, the Chinese food with Vincent Van Gogh. It's, it's like food used as a setup. Sure. I didn't mind it. It was okay. Um, I think that's all I got. But I have a pun that I want to use. And that... They bit off more than they could chew with this series. <laughs> because I think food got neglected because they have all these other ideas going on that they're trying to cram in. Like one of my problems with this series is like they get to like, like every time they capture the demon, it's so underwhelming. It's just, they get to the last two minutes and like, we got to wrap things up. Guys. And they just, so I think they have all these ideas because they're trying to infuse this series with like what was popular at the time, which was like Ghostbusters because they have the, Spook 2000 thing and Vince Van Gogh who's Vince Van Price has always been popular in my mind but he had a big comeback with Thriller right like that was huge Thriller is still huge one of the best selling albums of the world of all time um so yeah that and you had the popular the Thriller video with the zombies there's zombie things going on here uh Indiana Jones with, with short round they do that with flim flam that's kind of like sidekick and then maybe some gremlins some goonies all that kind of Spiegel, Spiegel, I can't say it, Spiegelian, do you know what I'm saying, Spielberg, Spiegel, whatever, 
Spielberg was huge back then. They're kind of, and they're just throwing all this stuff in. Plus, just seventies mysticism and all that stuff that's popular in the seventies that's coming forward in this. Bit off more than they can chew. I think they wanted to go in a different direction with humor, and maybe they felt food wasn't part of that direction. If that that doesn't make any sense, but that's what I'm going with. There were some funny moments in this, like when Shaggy said the microwave and he said eight million degrees. Set the temperature for eight million degrees. <laughs> yeah. That the it's like eight million degrees. Like I don't think that place would still be standing. No. <laughs> yeah. And then they use the food names for their walkie-talkie handles. Mm. So uh Daphne was chewing gum and Scooby and Shaggy were soda pop and milkshake. Right. And then in Scooby and Quacky Land, I thought it was funny when the waitress told the koala that she had to charge him for the dog in the soup. There's a dog in my soup. Sorry, but I'll have to charge you extra for that. I think that was the funniest moment for me. Because, yeah. It was cute. You just didn't expect that. No. Let's talk about Scooby Snacks. Another bit of a disappointment with the Scooby Snacks. We see Scooby Snacks in That's Monstertainment. The box is green with a yellow stripe and it has, says Scooby Snacks S-N-A-X. And then in Me and My Shadow Demon, Shaggy tells Scooby to cut down on the Scooby Snacks after Vincent Van Gogh says he was getting heavy. Weight jokes are not nice. No, they're not. <laughs> In the ghouliest show on Earth, Mumsy made Scooby a double batch of Scooby snacks, and they appeared to just look like dog bones. In Horoscope Scoob, Daphne offers Scooby Scooby snacks, and this is probably my favorite box. It had a, it was a green box and had Scooby's face on it, and it said S N A X at the top. I just love when the box has Scooby on it. Mm -hmm. I just love that. And then we saw in It's a Wonderful Scoob, Scooby ate Scrappy Snacks, and the box was tan with a blue stripe. Joel, what are your thoughts on the Scooby Snacks in the series? Yeah, kind of underwhelming, but I like um, Ghoulish Show on Earth, the box, and how it was incorporated into the plot reveal that the stage was rotating, that made the chest of demons disappear or something like that. Um, I like that idea that they actually incorporated Scooby Snacks, the box, into the mystery, even though it's not really a mystery, I guess, because it's... Can spooky things be, like, demonic things be mysteries? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, and then I like, like I mentioned before, in the the circus episode, uh, Mumsy do that scene with Scrappy later on with the dip. I didn't even know you could dip scooby snacks into a dip so i mean that opens up way more possibilities with what you can do with scooby snacks i guess do they is there a the scooby snacks they have in stores is that they have like a dunkaroos scooby snacks version no they don't but people do buy like icing and stuff to dip them in mm -hmm. that's all i got about scooby snacks Wendy, what did you think about the Scooby Snacks in the series? Well, I'm kind of thinking that we should make Scooby Snacks and dip like a thing. Because honestly, who wants to eat dry Scooby Snacks? Give it a give it a sauce. Give it a dip. Do something. Uh, in Pup Name Scooby-Doo, they cover them in all kinds of things. So, like, why not? I think we should be doing that. I'm glad that they at least had some in, in the series. I think, actually, that the box in Horoscope Scooby, with Scooby's face on it, that might actually be, like, my favorite Scooby snack box out of any series. Especially, there's one scene where uh, Tallulah is doing, like, a tarot reading, and we get this, like, weird shot of, like, a picture of a lighthouse, and it's on top of the box. So the box has been painted into the background instead of being like an animation cell. It looks amazing. It looks so cool. Like I love, like I, now I want to recreate one of those for myself to go with my other Scooby Snack box. I was kind of really put off with how the Scooby Snacks look though. They look like 
tiny little white like nerds candy or something and scooby and shaggy like eating them by the handfuls it was weird i don't know because it also kind of looked like bugs i'm not i'm not into that style of scooby snack i think it needs to be like an actual snack of some sort because yeah i really I, i'm not sure whose idea that was to make them into like rice pellets because it, it's it's weird that was weird i wasn't into that but um I also thought it was okay that they sort of semi kept them consistent throughout the series. Not as much as it should have been given that there's literally only like 12 or 13 episodes. So, I mean, they should have been the exact same. At least the box was green, I think, all the way through. So, I mean, like they kind of tried and and I appreciated that. That was good. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, Again, looking at it from the perspective of 50 years of Scooby to go over, I still, I still in my heart feel like there should be more Scooby snacks in every single episode. And I miss that dynamic of what Shaggy and Scooby will do for Scooby snacks. And kind of in this one, in one of the episodes, Daphne asks them if they want a Scooby snack to get them to do something. And then she won't give it to them. She's like, oh, when you're done. And I know that there was like maybe one or two episodes in Where Are You and the Scooby-Doo show where they tried to bribe them and then were like, oh, well, I'm all out or, oh, uh, when you're done. But that just seemed like kind of cruel and it kind of defeated the purpose of what Scooby Snacks are usually used for in the show. So I kind of wasn't really, I wasn't really into that. I thought like, what's even the point of putting that joke in? when if they're not going to get them then it's not helping them so why did you like it just felt counter counterintuitive to what we already knew of scooby so wasn't super into that but a plus plus for the box with scooby's face um definitely gonna make myself one of those i think that would be awesome that's a really cool box definitely mm -hmm. my favorite box of all the scooby snacks that we've ever yeah. seen mm-hmm and I'm surprised you didn't say anything about the Scrappy Snacks. Well, I don't know that I, what does Scrappy need Scrappy Snacks for? That's kind of what it is. Scrappy's already brave. Any. Scooby ate them. <sighs> Scrappy wasn't even on the screen when they well, met. They must have Scrappy made snacks. them for Scrappy to call them that though. So I'm just like, why does Scrappy have Scrappy Snacks? Because Scrappy doesn't need special snacks to be brave. No, he doesn't. When Scrappy wants a snack, Scrappy can come to my house and I'll make steak for him. Because <laughs> I love him. I love him. I almost put his bum on camera instead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Scrappy. <It's> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the lack of hot dogs and hamburgers. We didn't mm. see much of that in these episodes. There was, I think, only one episode that mentioned hot dogs. And I think only two that mentioned hamburgers. And that's what we're used to seeing. Right. Wendy, what are your thoughts on the lack of hamburgers and hot dogs? Again, I'm thinking maybe it was taking that step like a, a little bit more like mature or like they're a little bit more older. And maybe we associate those foods with like younger Younger people like that a lot, you know, eating lots of hot dogs or hamburgers. I don't know. I mean, I guess in a way what they did do in the episode was kind of maybe more challenging to, to do, you know, like less, less simple foods like the ribs and the steaks. And so maybe it was like, oh, let's, let's be a little more high end in our, in our designing and stuff like that. But I don't know, again, what's more fun than hot dogs and hamburgers so again it kind of without with so much lacking in the food department in the whole series and then they've also kind of eliminated the staple fun food again it does make the show even though it's clearly been written as a comedy in some areas it's not super funny though like it is lacking I feel like 13 Ghosts is a series that is better in theory than in execution. 
like when I think of what concept I really, really love for Scooby, I think of 13 ghosts. But then I watch it and I'm like, oh, it's just, like, it's just lacking, you know, like it has Vincent Price, but I feel like without Vincent Price, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Like, I feel like he kind of is what the show is. So, so yeah, I miss, I miss them having just a lot of fun and eating these like fair foods kind of thing. I, I feel like they kind of, they just suck the fun out of it a little bit by, by not having those in there and going the more like basic normal Cause like we do see quite a bit of like food being in like a normal mundane setting. They're on the train. They're having dinner. Vincent Van Gogh sitting at a table having dinner. You know, like it's it's less of like oh we're walking home from the movies in the middle of the night and we're gonna stop and eat a pizza. Like there's really there there that dynamic is is kind of gone. Anytime that we see food now in this episode, in this series, it's like where you would expect to see food in the real world. Oh, we're going to have lunch now. Oh, we're going to have dinner now. And again, like there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's more realistic, but it's Scooby-Doo. It doesn't need to be realistic. It needs to be fun. And it's, it's kind of lacking a little bit in that department. And sometimes a token hot dog can do a lot for for whatever's going on, especially if you put chocolate sauce on it. <laughs> Not that I would know what that's like, but yeah. <laughs> or just having Shaggy pull out the hot dogs out of his pocket, you know? Right, yeah. I mean, there was there was none of that. Just, oh, here, I have this in my pocket. Let's eat it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of, kind of sad, I guess, to see the lack of food in this, but... Mm-hmm. And you had said maybe they, they geared it more towards older kids. But I guess I feel like if it was geared more towards older kids, then shouldn't the food have really been drawn better? Because Mm -hmm. younger kids aren't going to look at a plate and be like, oh, I know exactly what that is. And that's so cool. Older kids are going to be like, what is this slop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's just that, like you said, Vincent Van Gogh or Vincent Price was the main, one of the main characters, maybe- you know, having it geared towards him, it kind of took the need for the food out of it. Right, right. Joel, what are your thoughts on the lack of hamburgers and hot dogs? I was just thinking of a missed opportunity with that fire-breathing dragon. and Oh, I love the roast- fire-breathing dragon. Roasting hot dogs or something with that fire. Just- yeah. That would have been great, yeah. yeah. Good. But it, yeah, I guess... They took it the malt shop, like you no longer have the gang hanging at the malt shop where they eat a lot of burgers and milkshakes and hot dogs and whatnot. Right. And they moved the exposition scenes to just Vincent usually berating the gang through his crystal ball and how frustrated he is with all the idiots in the world. <laughs> they took, you know, so a lot of it's a lot of Vincent and Crystal Ball just talking to the gang who are driving somewhere to get to the next demon. I guess there's not a lot of time for food. Uh, That's all I really got. Like the circus. Do I remember this correct? Like were the people, because they had free food and it was all burgers, hot dogs, pizza. Was all that food like rotten or was it, am I just making that up in my head? Like, because it was actual ghosts serving it. So were the people eating like rotten food or was that real hamburgers and hot dogs? Interesting. I don't know if I just made that up in my head or if that was in the episode. I don't think it was rotten in the episode. So it was just monsters serving hot dogs and burgers that were real? Interesting. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, geez, they should have drawn them all moldy and gross, then yeah. that would have that was another missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's if all they were really... all in a trance, they wouldn't have even known it. Yeah. Yeah. Just like when he said it's like you think in your head. This is the best series ever. Even like, I've been like fooled twice by this series. Like, I watched the original run. I was really young, but I enjoyed it. I didn't really remember it too much. And then they showed it on TV when I was like in my late teens and I just didn't make it through the series. I was like so hyped to watch it. And I just remember like flipping the channel a little later on. And then when I did my reviews for my my channel, I was hyped again because everyone's like, yeah, 13 Ghosts. 
just don't watch the movie. The movie sucks, but the, the series is awesome. And then I'm watching the series. I'm like, yeah, I'm not really into this. Yeah. But like Wendy said, like it should be like the best Scooby-Doo series ever. But mm -hmm. it's really Vincent who makes the series. Yeah. I think the tough thing is that there's so many side characters in 13 Ghosts. They had to mm -hmm. make time for all of them. And that oh, yeah. took away from a lot of what I think they could have done to make this such a, a better series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, you had, you would have like the main ghost, but then the ghost has yeah. five other ghosts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they have to make time for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the lack of gross foods? There was nothing. I did think about the possibility of saying, okay, there was this thing that Scooby was eating that looked like slop. Figure out something to make that looks like that and we'll taste that. But it's like, <laughs> I had no idea what it was. And I didn't think that that would be such a good idea. So, yeah. Joel, yeah. what are your thoughts on the lack of gross foods in 13 Ghosts? I guess, I don't know how to phrase this or word it, but it just seems like it's a different shaggy and scooby than what we're used to and maybe that's in due in part of like they're not focused on food scooby's just stressed out he's got ptsd he's just he's done with like mid mid series just done with everything he just runs off and goes back and lives with his parents and it's just i don't know shaggy's got the different colored shirt maybe i don't know it's just just not the Scooby and Shaggy that I'm kind of used to that we we really love in the, the earlier seasons. And I think maybe that's why this season doesn't completely work for me. Maybe if they incorporated those classic character tropes that we love, I would have liked the series more and we would have got more unusual food combinations. And the 80s was a perfect time to have all these unusual food combinations because we became more global. So we were kind of more used to all these... You know, in the 70s, you had like one or two restaurants in your, your town. But by the 80s, you had like a ton of different restaurants. If you lived in like a bigger city, you had tons of different restaurants. And you're, you knew what, like, ask me in the 70s what certain things were. I wouldn't know, have no clue. But by the 80s, I knew all these Italian words for different Italian dishes. And, you know, I knew what escargot was, where in the 70s, I would have no clue what that was. Just things like that. And yeah, I'm rambling. So I'm going to let Wendy continue or Nikki, if you want to <laughs> chip in. Wendy, what are your thoughts on the lack of gross foods? I completely agree with what Joel said. They're just, they're not the same characters anymore. And it's its not necessarily that that's a horrible thing, but it totally changed the dynamic of what they could even do in the show. Because they've, they've sort of, when you give somebody a personality transplant, it's going to affect all of the things that they like and that they do. And I feel like it, it kind of does in this series, you know, everyone, everyone is acting a little bit differently. I, I think that Scrappy is the character that that lends itself to the most positively because like everyone's getting like a little maturing done to them. And in Scrappy's case, obviously that's a good thing. And like, I love, scrappy from all of those 80s movies like that is my favorite incarnation of scrappy you know what i mean i i love that version of him so it works for him but then when it comes to shaggy and scooby and even daphne like i do love 13 ghosts daphne but not as much as i love all the previous daphne's though you know i, I really do feel like they were trying to make them a little bit older a little bit more mature and just didn't work that well because I don't know that we needed that, you know, I liked them the way that they were. And I thought that they were mature enough to be honest. And I kind of feel like maybe not all people, but a lot of people, I mean, I'm kind of the same as I was what, like 20 years ago. I really haven't changed that much. And I still like all of the same things and dislike the same things. And so I feel like for Shaggy and Scooby to sort of be tweaked to this extent is unrealistic. And I don't think that that needed to be done 
And it definitely, I mean, it, it did give the series a much more serious feeling than previous ones. Although I would also argue that they tried to, with Flim Flam, I feel like they tried to like maybe infuse like a touch of like that slapstick style comedy which i'm not a fan of anyway but it's like okay what are you doing you've got you like you're making it darker and more serious but you're also including like this like lowest form of humor and you're trying to like blend them together and i'm like it just it, it didn't mesh together every episode of this there are things that i absolutely love about them and then i watch it and i'm like okay but like whoever put it together though like it's missing it's just missing something to to bring it together you've got all like you've got a basket full of great ideas and you just dumped it and like no you you needed to order it a little bit you needed to like build a plate of food don't just dump a bunch of slop on my plate let me see what all of the different foods are and make sure that they go together and that they will taste good together and i feel like 13 ghosts like that's what's wrong it's a big plate of slop and maybe the slop is delicious i'm not gonna try it though because it's slop you know what i mean i'm not really interested in in tasting that because it, it looks kind of gross so um but yeah i think i think joel's right there's no gross food because this version of shaggy and scooby aren't into that and they don't seem to really care all that much for food anyway anymore at least not compared to previous iterations of them and yeah that like this is why it, it it's not super fun and enjoyable like it's still enjoyable but it, it's 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 its own thing it is different than everything that that came before it um and yeah if 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 vincent price wasn't in it i don't know that i would have watched it to be honest like i love scooby but I watch that series for Vincent Price, no question, like hands down. That that's why I watch it. And he kind of, like in every other thing that he ever did in his life, Vincent Price can save the worst script, the worst role, the worst whatever. And I kind of feel like he also saved that series of Scooby all on his own. I wonder if they made the like Scooby and Shaggy more mature because of Vincent Price. Mm. Maybe they felt mm. like they needed everybody to be more mature to fit in with him instead of making him dumb himself down. Not that the characters are dumbed down, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like yeah. instead of bringing him to the level that Scooby Doo normally is, they brought them up to his level. It's the only thing I can think of as to why they would have changed the characters so much. Yeah. Yeah. And yet I feel like there are certain times where he's like talking down to them and he's kind of treating them like they're stupid, mm. which I also was like, mm, like, do you have to, like, did we have to make that joke about Scooby getting fat? You know, like what purpose did that actually serve and like that's not like oh everybody's getting soft like no it's just it wasn't funny it's just not funny to make those jokes about anybody so yeah i don't know i don't know who knows why they do the stuff that they do but yeah not an a plus series for me it needs more food <laughs> weird weird crazy normal or otherwise like man bring it bring a truckload of food and just pff, dump it on there I think I expected there to be more weird foods in this because the 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 vill or villains, ghosts, whatever you want to call them, were so weird. They were kind of out there. And I felt like they could have done so much more with the food and enticing Scooby and Shaggy to like knowing that they love food and just making these weird concoctions and mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Final thoughts on the food of the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Wendy? I feel like we should just rewrite all the episodes with food and see how, how that goes over. You know what I mean? Like, we'll just, we'll just rewrite the series. We'll make a new series and, and we'll just go from there. I feel like, I feel like we could do it. It's not very many episodes. We could do this. Yeah. But yeah, like since Joel's here, let's give it a rating. Food in 13 Ghosts, like three out of 10 series itself 
like let's be generous vincent makes it a seven out of ten and but only like vincent's adding like two or three points to that for me yeah joel what are your thoughts on the food of the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo i'd agree with that rating and oh i just wanted to go back to scrappy please do please do i'm more than i liked him in the series yeah but i felt he was kind of neutered too like he lost his spunk that's true i agreed yeah yeah and they kind of like gave some of his characteristics to flim flam maybe Mm -hmm. maybe but i liked scrappy in this one he's kind of like taking control but he's also like a background character in some sense too yeah i did adore the scene where he's like the reporter interviewing the the dragon was that him that was him yeah he's got like his little reporter outfit on and he's from the courthouse it's been a year since i saw that episode but yeah that's the nicest thing you'll hear me say about scrappy we'll take it and yeah it would be lovely to rewrite this series we can keep scrappy the same we can keep vincent the same so we can reuse our voices um but we gotta bring back the old shaggy and scooby and we can flim flam i'm indifferent about i don't hate him i don't love him i know people have opinions i'm just like yeah it's a it's a it's a thing flim flam <laughs> and daphne daphne was cool werewolf daphne was cooler but yes agreed <laughs> Food wise, yeah, rewrite with more food, some cool food concoctions. 80s, we had like candy on the shelves, like Garbage Patch Kids. Was that what they're called? Garbage Pail Kids who did gross things with food. That was taking all the, you know, all the the hype away from Scooby at that time, I guess, because I don't know. Scooby just didn't, just didn't make this. uh, I don't know what I'm saying here. Yes. Scooby just under underwhelmed me with 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo with, with food. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there wasn't much really to even write down. I mean, there was a lot of food talk, but not so much eating. We didn't even really see them eating that much. I felt like they yeah. would make, they, in mm-hmm. the one episode, they made a huge sandwich and then the trees picked them up and yeah. they didn't even get to enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah, kind of a letdown with food. I would like to have seen more food, more weird things. Mm-hmm. I think with Vincent Van Gogh, I would have liked to have seen his character better, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, kind yeah. of more spooky, kind of more interesting. I just think they could have done so much more with him. Yeah. I mean, I'll take it, you know, having yeah. this price in, in Scooby-Doo is amazing. So. There's one scene with him that frustrated me. The one where he's sick in bed. I know it's played for laughs, but he just wasn't, he's just so mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah agreed. Mean. That's just not what you, I know it's humor and all that, but I'm like, this just does not work for me. Yeah. Agreed. I felt like that was out of character for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like they kind of wasted an opportunity with him in that episode and just having him lay in bed like insulting everybody yeah something that you said earlier about there being too many characters like too many side characters i think maybe the overall problem with the show is that everyone feels like a side character like no one is the lead everyone is like in the background like the gang and the ghosts and everything else because there's so many there's just so many people and it's kind of like with a soap opera where you've got like 30 different storylines all running concurrently but you've only got half an hour to watch it and when you're trying to make one episode fill all of these things it's like there's not enough time so everyone became a background character to the story that wasn't all that fleshed out anyway. Like, they feel like the stories themselves weren't really enough to carry the episodes. Like, we needed the characters doing things. But there was just so much going on that no one was the star. Everyone was just like an afterthought. Everyone is just there 
and it's like it doesn't work because like you need someone to be the focus the ghost wasn't the focus the demon wasn't the focus scooby wasn't the focus like vincent van Gogh wasn't the focus because even he felt like a background character a lot of the time and so that's very interesting that like yeah you you can do too much like more is not always more like you, you do sometimes have to edit yourselves and i think maybe that series would benefit the most from a little bit of editing edit some characters and make your story point a little bit stronger because like you said earlier too when they catch the demons like it's very anticlimactic most of the time it's just like oh it's in the chest we're done and you're like okay okay i guess we'll move on from that then but but yeah too much going on and no no real focus to it it was all kind of a haze in all of the episodes and so it's almost fitting that we didn't really get an ending you know what i mean because the whole thing kind of read like something that wasn't completed and so that to then not have it completed at the end anyway kind of suited it i guess but but yeah elisa had scrappy so i'm happy it's fine it's totally fine and scrappy was less annoying so that was good it was adorable considering a lot of the other characters in 13 ghosts were so irritating Mm -hmm. scrappy was not as bad so good job scrappy (laughs) (laughs) we are going to wrap things up before we do let everyone know where they can find you on social media and wendy we'll start with you well you can find scrappy and i anytime if you're looking for Scrappy, you can just come find me. He will be with me, guaranteed. I keep him as far away from Nikki and Joel as I can because I don't trust what they will do with him if I'm not around to watch. But you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Wendy Bridge. On Twitter, I'm Wendy Loves Jesus. And my blog is wendylovesjesus.wordpress.com. Joel? You can find me on YouTube, where sometimes I talk about Scrappy when I review his episodes. I uh, just search for Plant Scooby. And you can find all my links on scoobyaddicts.com. Thank you for joining us for another Scooby panel. Thank you for tuning in to another Scooby panel. I'm Nikki Blake from scoobyaddicts.com. If you like these panels, please subscribe to my channel for more great discussions. A huge shout out to our patrons, Julie Rosen, Ross from scoobyfan.net, Scooby-Doo of Roblox, Tage, and Christopher W. If you would like to support the Scooby panel, please go to patreon.com slash scoobyaddicts. A very special thank you to artist, blogger, and Scooby collector Wendy Bridge and Joel from Planet Scooby. Scooby panel is available in podcast form on most podcast platforms or as a web series on YouTube. You can find Scooby panel on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as at Scooby panel. Scooby and Shaggy were voiced by Scott Ennis. Check out Scott's website, onescottshop.com. Scooby Addicts artwork by Will Davenport. Video editing by Nikki Blake. Music composed and performed by Bovine Nightmares. Please join us next time for another Scooby panel.